Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Wishing and hoping that everybody out there had a very wonderful holiday season. I know I probably eat a little bit more than I should have, but I am happy and content. So uh, being that the New Year's is coming up, I've got a lot of videos planned. I'm still going to be uh, setting up, I'm still setting up my new studio. I'm actually trying out some new cameras right now. So this is a new camera that I'm using today. Um, I'm also trying to get this lapel mic tuned in just right to where I'm clear, but I'm not too loud and there's not much, if any, background noise. But so it's going to be a little bit of growing pains, but I've got some videos planned along the lines of basically from the bottom on up of what are the keyboard parts how they work different layouts different mounting options uh, things like that uh, and then a simple task to do uh, being that i'm one of the moderators over at budget keeps on su uh, the subreddit on reddit.com there's a lot of questions that come across that are the same so i'm going to try to make videos that answer those questions ahead of time kind of give a guide to people but just being as objective as, as possible. So anyway, today I want to take a look at the latest entrance in the V-Series. Um, actually, I don't think it's the latest. I think that new Alice, the V8, is the latest. But um, Keychron has just been knocking it out of the park with their V-Series. And today we've got the Keychron V7. Um, and this is a 70% uh, keyboard, which I'm actually kind of fond. Well, I'm fond of 65% and ups for the most part, though I do. I have been known to like some 40% as well. Um, but the V series so far have been delivering some really nice keyboards. So I wanted to go ahead. Now this one, I did not get it. I don't think I got it bare bone. I think they didn't have an option to get bare bone, but. I don't think I did get a bare bone. I thought I did. I usually try to get a bare bone whenever I can. So we've got our Keychron cable, and a Keychron still doesn't want to listen. Here's a one from an RK board, and it has, actually, no, this is from a Red Dragon board, if I'm not mistaken, and it actually has this little tail. Keychron, why don't you add that little tail to yours? It really wouldn't be all that hard. Anyway, I digress. We have our tools in here. I do like that they include a screwdriver and some extra screws. Uh, these are the screws for the plate. These are the sc gold screws and the screws for the case. And we are via out of the box. And here we are. Here is the Keychron V7, another entrance in the V series. So we have, as always, screw and stabilizers uh, pre lubed. Uh, we have south facing LEDs and five pins. Uh, we have a reset button right there for when we really need to reload uh, the firmware. We do have a hardware Windows and Mac. And it's already over on the Mac to start with. And we got a USB port. It's not on a daughter board. It is part of the PCB as this is a tray mount. So, but despite it being a tray mount, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't deliver a good type of experience. You have a good amount of height. And we've got two pairs of legs. So we're going to have a total of three typing angles. Now, <clears throat> I didn't even take too much thought into what switches I'm going to put in here. Um, I do have some that I've been wanting to try really bad. Let me see a man about a horse. All right, so today I'm getting to finally load up a full board. I've only really uh, done these switches uh, on a couple of testers. Um, but their Gazoo's latest switch, they're called the U4TX. And basically, they're U4T with half of silence. So you get the downstroke, but it's silent on the upstroke. And it has a very unique sound and feel. Now, I know that usually I say, and I, I still stand by it, that a lot of 
materials and you know your case and what you put in it, which mines and how they're done, um, as well as your keycaps are all going to have a. Uh, if they're all playing their part in the ultimate end um, acoustic profile that your keyboard has when you're using it. But and you know, because some people will just ask, what's what switch can I can I buy to make my keyboard hockey? No, and it's not usually one thing. But we'll say that this switch definitely is going to help. If you're looking for that thocky or even more of that poppy clacky kind of sound, that's where you know you can tune your keyboard. But this switch, uh, this is a 65 gram. It's a clear top. It's RGB. Uh, it is five lead, but I believe he has three, a three pin available as well because these are. Um, I mean, for, there's some folks out there that still have some of the Otemu hot swap sockets. Well, these will work with them. Uh, so this, these will work on pretty much any keyboard. So today I'm going to go ahead and load these up. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what cues we're going to do. And we'll do a sound test. Let's get into it. And here we are with the V7 loaded up with the Zoos U4TXs. These are new switch, which I'm really going to enjoy doing the sound test. I think it's going to sound pretty good. But before I loaded up some caps, I just wanted to go ahead and show off the RGB. As we can see, Keychron, um, these V-series have been doing a great job with RGB. The brightness is great. The color is nice. The uh, solid colors are very nice. I mean, sometimes on some of the cheaper boards, you know, you'll select yellow and it'll be greenish. You'll select white and it'll be bluish. This one really has some nice crisp colors. Um, I'm not crazy about RGB as far as trying to, but I do like the RGB to accentuate. Um, and I have on uh, the V series does give the ability in VIA to do, which is basically what I, the only per key RGB I do is changing the color the background colors for the modifiers and the alphas and it has that setting available in bias so it's already been programmed um, in qmk which is a nice treat so anyway i just wanted to show off uh, the colors and like i said these are the u4tx's these are the rgb so they have uh, the little window and almost like a little diffuser so it helps that light um, shine and pop uh, now these are the newest um, gazoos and they have all been uh, retooled, I guess would be the right word. So there is no interference uh, with north or south facing uh, and cherry um, profile keycaps. I decided on a keycap set that I got um, not too long ago. I actually put this on a on another kit, but I think it's going to look good on this one. This is black on gray, um, nice PBT. I got it during um, Canon Keys uh, mystery. It was a mystery box, so I think they were $29. So, and I actually think I, I did pretty good. This is, a, this is a nice set. It has a lot of compatible keys. Uh, it will work with pretty much all the basic layouts from 60% uh, on up. So let's go ahead and load these keys up on this key crown. And we'll uh, do our closing thoughts. And what I'm really looking forward to is our sound test. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Keychron V7. It says 70% open source QMK via bare bone from Keychron. The case is made out of ABS plastic and it comes with metal screw inserted or molded into the frame uh, to not have to worry about stripping. It has a steel plate and it is a tray mount keyboard. It does include screw and stabilizers, 1000 Hertz pulling rate, it is, uh, and it does have a Windows Mac hardware switch. It also is south-facing LED 
compatible with 3 and 5 pin switches. It currently MSRPs for $64 bare bone, $84 pre-built, which gives you a set of a selection of three different K Pro switches from the red, the blue, and the brown. Out of the box, this keyboard weighs 615 grams. It has a chin of 22 millimeters and a back height of 30 millimeters with a typing angle default to three and a half degrees. When raising the middle feet, you rip the back, it becomes 37 millimeters in height with an eight degree typing angle. Using the last and final set of feet, you have a height of 43 millimeters and a typing degree of 11. And here we are, the Keychron V7 fully built with the black on gray PVT from Canon Keys. Um, obviously, I had to make up for some keys. I will be reprogramming these, so I, uh, it gives me everything that I need. As long as I've got insert, delete, page up, page down, home and end, I'm happy. Um, you know, that's what it gives me here. Obviously, I could remap the, this one is the one that does the colors, but I'm not too crazy, no, I'm not too concerned about that. And I didn't, the keycap set does not have a function too, it has two different functions. Um, which I'll have to take a look at what that looks like in Via, but I will be coming back to this one along with the other Keychron V series and doing uh, mods. But off the bat, stock with these U4 TX, honestly, I'm surprised. It, <laughs> it, in my opinion, it sounds pretty good. I mean, it will sound better once modded. But um, like I said, this keyboard, uh, what it retails for, what it gives you, I mean, this probably is the first 75 or 70 percent in stock keyboard uh with via and qmk out of the box um especially for uh, under 100 dollars. i mean this is just a lot of us that have been around you know even just for the last couple of years since or since 2020 just like these are the choices <laughs> when we had i mean it was so hard and we had to settle for you know, expensive boards that didn't even have hot swap, had to swap on and on and on. This is a good direction where uh, the industry is heading. Keychron has just knocked it out of the park. Keychron publishes files for all of their plates. They're basically open source. So if you want to download it, 3D print it with some, I mean, I would recommend probably PTFE or ABS. Um, or download it and send it to your local shop and have them, you know, laser cut it out of FR4 um, or any other material that you'd like, you can do that. And they give you that option, which is very nice. But even though these do come with the steel plates, they still form and sound very nice, um, especially for, for a lot of situations, perhaps not everyone, but for a lot of situations, buying a Keychron uh, V-Series, either bare bone or loaded, I mean, if you want to learn about it, I would get it bare bone. Uh, Keychron, as good as they've been doing with this, they still haven't done too good of a job with their keycaps. Um, I, I personally have not had a keycap break, but I've only got a couple of sets of Keychron keycaps, and they were the first thing to come off the keyboard. Um, but I've seen way too many pictures of Keychron stems, Keychron, Keychron keycap stems, broke and broken. Um, and sometimes people blame the switch, but it's, you know, the caps, I mean, I've seen, I've got some caps that have defects on them. So I would recommend bare bone and then picking your switches and your keycaps. I know it's a little bit more. I mean, if you want to just go ahead and get it, cause I mean, it's $20 difference between a bare bone and a fully loaded. So you're basically paying $10 for switches, $10 for caps. So, I mean, it's hard to argue, but if you really are looking to build something good, that's the route I would take anyway. So I am again impressed. Um, this is the four time, first time I'm trying the, the U4TXs and anything other than just a switch tester. And I'm very happy. Um, I've got a few good ideas for where I'm gonna load because I got a, I got a few of them. So I'm probably gonna load up a couple of boards with them. Um, and definitely it's gonna make it to my daily, although I've been switching out boards like crazy over the last uh, a few weeks when I'm actually sitting in front of a computer because it's been the holidays and it's been busy. Anyway, I like this board. I can highly recommend it. Um, 
if you've had one of the v series you're going to be very familiar with what you know this is built like but i'm going to be coming back i, I <laughs> over the year i purchased all but two of the v series so and i probably will end up buying those other two anyway i'll be coming back to all of them at one point or another and doing modifications to them um i'm going to aim to not only you know go for one sound signature but try to go for different sound signatures more marbly and poppy more foggy and deep more clacky and loud um maybe even some clickies i do have some clicky switches and people do like them so hey why not make clicky sound good i mean i know i was a clicky fan i know i'm not crazy about them now but anyway I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Keychron V7 loaded up with Gazoo U4TX. These are the 65 uh, gram springs and the keycaps are nice PBT black on gray from Canon keys. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.